Fill my cup, Lord. I, I lift it up, Lord. Come in, quench this thirsting of my soul. Breath. up and make me whole. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Peyton Tabernacle Church of God in Christ, midweek service, also known as Soul Food Thursday. Be refreshed, be rejuvenated, be revived. If you've had a hectic week, perhaps a hectic day, today is the day, and now is the time where we're going to hear the word of God on tonight from our pastor, the elder Charles P. Aiken Sr. But before we get started, I want to inform each and every one of you as a reminder of what our mission is. And our mission is that we have been chosen and sent by God to repair the spiritual condition of men, preaching Christ Jesus, rebuild the family unit by teaching love and righteousness, and restore godly communities and their relationships with God through obedience to his word. And our prayer is that this changes the world in which we live. Glory, hallelujah. One person, one family, and one community at a time. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. We're going to have our prayer and scripture reading by none other than Brother C.J. Akins. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, my name is Charles Payton Akins. Please bow your heads. Thank you for this day. Thank you for everything we have. Bless the people who will hopefully tune in. And we pray that your spirit will be with us and in this service. And we pray that we get into the same position. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today I'm going to be reading Romans 8 verses 1 to 4. King James Version. <laughs> there is therefore now no con condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus, in Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For the law could not do, and that is, it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The word of God is blessed. Amen, amen, amen. And now it's time for our pastoral teaching, the word of God on this evening. So get your spiritual forks, your spiritual utensils, whatever you utilize when you eat and get ready to feast on the word of God on tonight. We're now having Pastor Charles Peyton 
Aikens Sr. Good evening, good evening. Thank you, sweetheart. God bless you all. And just as First Lady said, we hope that you will be recharged, rejuvenated, uh, restored on this evening if you've had a hectic day, week, or whatever. I do want to say uh, something that's interesting before I get into study <clears throat> for this evening. There was something else that I planned to study, but I came across this article on today, and I, I talk with my wife about it. I probably talk her uh, <laughs> talk her crazy about this. She rolls her eyes sometimes because I talk to her about it a lot. But uh, I just I have to I have to do this study tonight. Um, and it is going to take a different tone than I thought it was originally going to take also, but it is going to be, uh, what it is going to be nonetheless. So this evening, the topic of studies is going to be the death of our society by immorality, the death of our society by immorality. There are a plethora of scriptures that we are going to be coming from, um, those that we're going to, to focus and, and hone in on are going to be Galatians 5, 16 through 23, James 1, 12 through 15, Genesis 2, 21 through 25, Matthew 19, 4 through 6, Mark 10, 6 through 8, and Ephesians 5, 30 through 32. Sounds like a lot of scriptures. It is a little bit, but we're going to get into those scriptures and then we're going to have a discussion. Now, what we're talking about tonight is we're, we are going to have a talk about the LGBTQ and whatever other new letters there are, community, um, its, its relation to the church, um, this inclusion philosophy, inclusionism. Um, but we will get into it. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit does everything so that I do just like Christ did, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. We're, we're going to talk about the, the truth of what is happening so that people fully understand it, because there's a need for people to have that discussion. People want to have discussions about the scriptures, and, and, and I'll get into all of that. They're not even qualified to discuss the scriptures. Like the people that wrote the article, a lot of these people, they think they're qualified to write these articles about the word of God. And frankly, if you are not a man or woman of God, if the Holy Spirit does not dwell within you, you are not qualified. I don't care how many degrees you have, you are not qualified, okay? The only way you can fully understand any writing that you receive is to get the first, from the first hand, first hand, the information from the person that did the writing. God inspired these people to write. So while there are cultural and um, chronological um, connections and assumptions that can or will be made, even some language barriers and such, the, the crux of the uh, content is driven by the Holy Spirit. So regardless, the Holy Spirit, God, is timeless. He created time and God walked into time to bring man out of his foolishness and sin God is out of time. So because he is, lives, because he dwells outside of time, that has no bearing on him. So when he speaks, God speaks eternally. That's that's something that these people don't, none, none of this is understood by them because they because Satan is their father. Demonic influence is what drives their hubris, their pride, their conversation, their uh, commentary, their narratives are driven by demonic influence. And as a result, they're going to paint the picture according to Satan. It's, it's simple. And as a result, Satan cannot and will not ever effectively and truthfully stop all of that right now. He cannot truthfully and effectively share the word of God with you ever. Satan is a liar. So he'll never discuss it truthfully with you anyway. He is evil and unrighteous, unholy, unclean. So he can't do it effectively. So when you go to, uh, Jesus said, cast not your pearls to swine, neither give what's holy to dogs. 
for they will rent you, they will turn and rent you and trample them underfoot. Now, what does that mean? It means that when you give something holy, something special to someone or something that doesn't understand it or can't appreciate it, they don't know what to do with it. And that's where we find society in its uh, commentary and narrative concerning homosexuality, uh, bisexuality, all of that stuff, sexual immorality, and the church. They're not qualified to have that discussion. And the sooner they understand that, the better. But they don't want to truly understand it anyway, because as long as they pretend not to understand that or or um, as long as they argue that point or ignore it, then there's a gateway open for the excuses that are applied. Why can't everyone, if you decided to sin, accept the fact that you're a sinner? Why do you need people to make excuses for you? Why are we seeking for this inane banter connected to the word of God to justify why you should be, you want to be in a church? If you're living a sin-filled life, then you must accept the consequences of that life. If you choose to walk in a way that is contrary to God, you must accept the consequences. We're not going to yell tonight. We're going to talk in love, love and kindness. So let's go before the Lord because I'm already off to the races. Most gracious and eternal, heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. God, we thank you for all that you do, that you continue to do, and we thank you for what you will do in the future. We praise your holy name for being in our lives, dear God. We thank you, all of us who have been made free by salvation, who have allowed the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. We thank you for the privilege. We thank you for the right. And just as the word said tonight, because we choose to walk in the spirit, we are not condemned, just convicted whenever we are wrong, when we think wrong, when we feel wrong, when we do wrong. And then by our relationship, we are driven to repentance. And then we can restore a right relationship with you. For this, we thank you. Now, God, I pray that you find some heart, that you plant this word, this seed, and help them to further understand what is truly happening. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. All right, saints. Now, there are seven scriptures that these people focused on. Sit still. You're on camera. There are seven scriptures that this author focused on, and those being Genesis 9, 20 through 27, uh, Genesis 19, 4 through 13, Leviticus 18, 22, Leviticus 20 and 13, uh, Romans 1. Really, they were focused on um, the latter part, I think it was 26 through 28, but I say Romans 1. 18, verse 18 through verse 32, because it goes to the whole discourse instead of just a piece. And then this removes the excuses that they use. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, 1 Timothy 1 and 10. And I should have gone through all of them too, because what I like to do as a man of God, I want to read the forefront and the rear of the scripture, not just a couple of parts of it, because what you'll find oftentimes is when you go through and you move backward, stop playing, I said, when you go backward and forward, then you get the full understanding of what the person was talking about. You can make excuses for what someone was, what area they were focused on, what context they were using some phrase in if you only take one piece of the scripture. But if you go behind it, and then you go in front of it, and you read far enough, then you start to get the full explanation, the full breadth of the discussion. And that's what you need in order to find the truth. You need the full breadth of the discussion. So those are the scriptures that were in question. And the scriptures we're going to read, 
I already went through, those scriptures are going to answer what the excuses are being, what excuses are being applied. So I'm going to read this first. There are authors, so-called theolo theolo theologizing biblical text, say that five times fast, theologizing biblical text based upon canonized result, who infer that biblical authors, if condemning homosexuality or sexual immorality, did so based upon cultural assumptions, i.e. the Israelites have certain cultural focuses and beliefs, and everything that was being discussed is based on, it has its foundation predicated upon their cultural beliefs and ideologies. It isn't based on God, it's based on cultural assumption. <laughs> they stuck their foot in their mouths. And this is what I mean about them. They're unqualified because I'm going to talk about this in a minute. They argued as such that these scriptures do not refer to homosexuality or homosexual relationships between two free adult and loving individuals. They describe rape or attempted rape, Genesis 9, 20 through 27, uh, Genesis 19, 1 through 11, cultic prostitution, Leviticus 18 and 22, 20 and 13, male prostitution and pederasty, which is sexual relations between two males, one of which is a minor, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, 1 Timothy 1 and 10, and the Isis cult in Rome, in Romans 1, 26 through 27. Okay? These people employed a poor attempt at damning the cultural assumptions ploy in order to dismiss, or darning, I'm sorry. They, they chose to darn the cultural assumptions ploy in order to dismiss the actual righteousness and holy standards of God. The, the Levitical law represented godly standards that must be upheld. The cultural assumption was actually developed in response to obedience to God. In other words, Israeli culture was derived by and predicated upon godly principle. Remember, the Israelites are named after Israel, whose name was Jacob. They are the 12 tribes of Jacob or Israel. Focus. I am not going to say it again. As a result, this family developed out of one individual who had a relationship with God. His life was driven by his relationship with God. So the laws they received were predicated upon godly standard. It's not a cultural, they didn't have some cultural, because originally they came from another land. So it wasn't about their culture, that was their homeland. This was about a relationship God desired to have with a family, and that family grew. God warned these people in each of these scriptures, not regarding rape or cultural behaviorism, but un righteous activities. For instance, Lot offered his daughters to be raped by the same men that wished to rape the angels who came into Sodom and Gomorrah. If this were merely an issue of rape, would he not have also defended, tried to protect the women in the same fashion as he did the two men, rather than to offer his two daughters up to be raped by these men? Of course he would. So there was it was not a matter of rape. It wasn't a rape issue because if it were a rape issue, he would not have offered his daughters up. The expectation would have been to protect everyone, not the two angels. I am personally, saints and friends, tired of how Paul, Paul put it, ungodly dogs, swine children of Satan acting as if they have some authority as it relates to scripture. 
if you're unsanctified, if you're unholy, if the Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in you, then you are of the world. You need to stick to your world and to your understanding and stay away from mine because you know nothing about any of it. You don't have enough of an understanding of God, relationship, holiness, or any of it. You simply grab at straws to make excuses. And we're going to get into why that is so. So I've not studied Spanish in over 30 years. And this is an example of what I'm talking about. I wouldn't trust myself to interpret any Spanish text for you. Satan knows the Bible to a degree by way of his former relationship with God. So why would you trust him then to interpret the word of God? These people who are trying to interpret the word, these authors are people who do not have a relationship with God, who are not sanctified people, who have not yielded their members to God. These are people who do what they want to do. Love is not letting me fall off of a cliff or a broken bridge. Love is not telling me to enjoy the trip but instead warning me that the cliff is near and the bridge is out. These people wish to give the impression of love and, and, and the ideal of inclusion, but it's for their own purpose. It's for their own gain. It isn't because, because they love the people of the LGBT community. Either they are people who are within the LGBTQ community or they are people who want something from the LGBTQ community. And as a result, they will pal up with you and tell you, you can be included in this church so you can give their church money and they can get as much as they want to get out of you while you are on your way to hell. That's all it is. I guess that I must hate my children, like my son here. I must hate him when I tell him or them that they're engaging in something that's dangerous for them. I should just let them be happy and enjoy the ride, no matter what danger uh, is, is going to uh, confront them as a result of the behavior, right? Not hardly. I love my children, so I am hard on them. And my love compels me to warn them of any and every danger I am aware of that they are either participating in or they are pulling close to. Because I love them, I will tell them, I will warn them, and I will help them. Now, having gone, I've gone there, I want us to go through these scriptures. So first we're going to go to Galatians 5. 16 through 23. All right. And we're going to read all of this from the King James Version. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Come here, read. Can you see it? You read some so you can pay attention. Read from 17. Hurry up. 17 come on. to what? Just read. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. For the flesh lust. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the, uh, one. The, the one to the other, so, they, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would, but if ye be led of the spirit, Ye are not under the law. Keep going. I didn't tell you to stop. Okay. Now the, now the works of the flesh are, man, are manifest. These, which are these? Adultery, for, fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanness, and... Lascivious. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Louder. Lasciviousness. Adultery. Which, Idolatry. 
idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variant, variants, variants, emu, emulations, wrath, Louder. strife, strife, seditions, and heresies. heresies. Um, envying, envyings, murderers, drunk. Drunkness. Louder. Read Drunk, louder. Okay. Drunkness. Rev Revelings. Revelings and such like of the which of the which I tell before as I have also told you in the time past that which they do, which they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, faith, faith, meekness, tem tem temperance, against such, against, against, such there is no law. All right. James 1, 12 through 15. Blessed is a man that endureth temptation. But when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Genesis 2, 21 through 25. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken away from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh and they shall both. And they were both naked, the man and the wife, and were not ashamed. Matthew 19, four through six. And he answered and said unto them, have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Mark 10, 6 through 8. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh so that they are no more twain, but one flesh. Now, when they say twain, they mean they two, the two strings shall become one. And so once they become one and are intertwined, they are no more two. They are just one, the husband and wife. Ephesians 5, 30 through 32. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall two shall become one flesh. That is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now, Let's go through these scriptures. Why am I bringing up these scriptures? I think you should clearly understand that. Um, I am going to read. I want you to remember that. And then I'm going to read just a little bit of Genesis. So Genesis 9, we'll do 26 and 27. And he said, blessed be the Lord God of Shem. I'm sorry. Uh, let's start from here. I'm sorry, from 20. And Noah began to be 
a husband man and he planted a vineyard and he drank of wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Jephthah took a garment and laid it upon both his shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. You are not supposed to look upon your parents' nakedness. That was the whole point, right? All right, so Genesis 19, 4 through 13, really the most important parts. Uh, let's see. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called out unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Biblical sense of no means have sexual interaction or congress with them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Why is Lot calling it wicked? If it... Why is like, <laughs> they want you to believe that it's it's about the rape? It isn't about the rape. That's not what Lot is really bothered about. Lot is bothered about them trying to have sexual congress with these men. Again, you're gonna see this in the next portion. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known a man. I have two virgin daughters. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Rape them, sodomize them, do whatever you like. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. He just offered up his daughters to be raped, to be sodomized, for these men to do whatever they want. You want me to believe that the issue is about rape? No, it isn't. The issue has nothing to do with unconsensual sex. It has to do with the wickedness of homosexual behavior. That's what he was worried about. Leviticus 18 and 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. That means a man can not have sexual congress with another man. Don't give me this nonsense about uh, it had to do with the prostitution in the, in the, um, I, I forget the false gods they were worshiping. I told you about that, read about that. It has nothing to do with that. No man should be in sexual congress with another man, period. And that's why they say, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with woman. So you shouldn't be doing the same thing with a man. You shouldn't lay down with a man like you lay down with a woman. It is abomination. Leviticus 20 and 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death and their blood shall be upon them. Back in the day, you would be killed for homosexual behavior. A lot of cultures killed people because it was considered sick, depraved, and that's what it is. It's sick, it's demonic, it's depraved. I'm sorry, I, and I can't really say I'm sorry because I'm not sorry, I'm responsible to share the truth. I'm not gonna browbeat you with it, I'm not gonna, um, I'm just, I'm not going to, just like Christ said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. So I'm going to tell you kindly. I, I'm, I don't care what these people are telling you. They're lying. They're, all that they're saying is, is a bunch of lies. Uh, none of this is bent around um, rape. Uh, none of that. Prostitution. That's not what they're talking about. They're saying the act they're in is an abomination, period. I don't care what pretenses under which it is taking place. It is an abomination. They didn't say the act of 
raping a man, like uh, the act of taking. They didn't say taking. That's not what they said. They said lie with. When you say lie with, that already itself inherently uh, assumes consent. See, this is that. This is what I mean about Satan and the lies. Satan is nothing but a liar. These people, they don't care about you. LGBTQ community, these people who are telling you you're going to heaven, that you are included, that God loves you, they're lying. God loves you. He doesn't love what you're doing. And if you continue in it, you will go to hell. That's the only place you can go. We already read Galatians. It gave the whole list. You, you cannot get away from it. That's what God says. That's that's the it's the rule. And and we read that. That's why we read the scriptures about Adam and Eve because it tells you God took the woman out of the man. Woman was created for man, not for another woman. They used to say. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And tell me, the first edict man was ever given was before God even let Adam name the animals. The first edict mankind was given was to be fruitful and multiply. Without the assistance of doctors, you can't be fruitful and multiply now in an LGBT, transgender, whatever relationship. You cannot reproduce. Back then, we would have died off because there were no doctors who could do in vitro and all these other things that we can do now. There were no test tube children. God intended for us, like every other animal, to replenish itself. You can't do that being a homosexual. You can't do that being a lesbian, a transgender, or whatever. You can't do it. So you are going against your natural intended purpose. And that is what makes it an abomination. I'm tired of these people lying. The fact of the matter is these wicked, evil, lying, derisive dogs are doing this so you will continue to attend their ministries, their so-called ministries, because in truth, there are ministries, their country clubs, where you can give your money to them. You can support because they say, rah, rah, LGBTQ, F, Z, and whatever else. It's, we include you. We, we agree. We have gay and lesbian ministers. You ain't going to heaven. Two things are most important here. Number one, they don't love you because love tells you when you're right and when you're wrong. Love will not lead you down a crooked pathway. Love will take a bullet for you, not push you in front of a bullet. Number two, the reasoning for this, even though some of them know you're wrong, is again, because whatever you can bring to them, whether it's your talent, your money, or whatever else, they're using you for it. And you feel like you're being included. But question to all of you, do you feel at peace? That's something for you to think about. All LGBTQF and all these, do you, are you at peace? Or are you an alcoholic, a drug addict, uh, all kinds of other things, and never in your mind having peace, never truly able to feel joy, happiness perhaps here and there, but never joy because something's missing, because you're in a position you aren't supposed to be in, because you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. 
It's wrong. You know it's wrong. God knows it's wrong. All right. Then we're going to read Romans. Let's see. All right. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever? Amen. For this cause, God gave them up with vile affections for even their women. Listen to this. Even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. What's he talking about? And likewise, also the men. See, he's not talking about, they, they, they want to talk about this cultism and I don't want to hear that nonsense. He didn't mention anything about cultism. Paul was a very direct and specific preacher. So if he was referencing cultism, he would have said those dogs, those cult leaders, the I doubt every time he talked about false teachings, false di uh, divination, uh, religion and all of that stuff, he mentioned it. Every time Paul discussed those things, he called them out clearly. So he was not talking about ISIS cults and all. No, he wasn't. That isn't, he was talking about the actual sexual congress between a male and a male and a female and a female. That's why he pointed it out here. And likewise, the, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman. Men, leaving the natural use of the woman. Sexual congress with a woman. Burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. Now, listen to this. These, I'm, I'm, these, I'm so tired of these people. You can't get any clearer than this, okay? He says here, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, okay? Even if he was referencing the ISIS cult, what he's saying, he's not talking about the ISIS cult. He's talking about the act they took part in, okay? And there, all of this is consensual because they burned in lust one for another. There wasn't one person raping another person. Nobody was being forced to do it. They burned in their flesh one toward the other. And then if that wasn't clear enough for you, this is what I'm telling you, people. Paul is very direct. So if that lust one toward another wasn't clear enough for you, Paul went ahead and said, oh, so in case you didn't understand when I said that, I meant men with men. Working that which is unseemly. Can the church say amen? amen. Can the church say amen again? Amen. Can the amen. church say amen again and again? Amen. 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 So all the lying, all the commentary, all the justifications, people be careful. Because it, it's a sad commentary. But unfortunately, that's what people are doing. They, there are some people who are gay and lesbian, homosexual. They know they're wrong. They know they are. They know it's wrong. They know what they're doing is wrong. And I can't say this enough. I say this all the time. And my wife probably gets sick of hearing it. All of it is from the spirit of perversion. It's the same demonic influence, same demonic entity. That same demonic entity ruled my life for years. You hear me? I wasn't homosexual, I was heterosexual. But when I tell you, I was like a crack addict about sex with women, that's what I mean. So just like these, exactly, it's the same exact spirit. So when these, I, I've talked to homosexuals before, and some of this, I just, it, it, it's me, it's who I am because I just can't shake it. I don't care what you, you are unclean. 
You don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, so you don't have the strength to shake it. As an unclean person, you can't shake those demonic influences. They're stronger than you. So no, you can't shake it. Not because you were born that way, but because that demonic influence is stronger than you are. And because you don't know God, because you've never known God, you don't even know the sound of your own voice. So when they speak to you, when they're telling you you find men attractive or you find women attractive, you can't discern the difference between their voice and your voice because you've never known your voice. Sin is bondage. Okay? It is bondage. That's why Paul says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Because when we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit makes us free. And our mind becomes free. Our eyes become clear. Then we can see the sin we've been operating in and why and how it is wrong. But when you're without the Holy Spirit, your eyes are blinded. Your ears are deafened. And your mind is clouded. So you find it very difficult to know the difference between your voice, Satan's voice, and God's voice. And, and frankly, you can't even hear God's voice because God speaks very low, very softly. He doesn't yell and scream. So if you're not paying attention, if you're not focused, you're not going to hear his voice. First Timothy 1 and 10. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind... For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, they're telling you that is contrary to sound doctrine. Homosexuality, uh, lesbianism, transgenderism is contrary to sound doctrine. They just said it. Now we've gone through all of these scriptures what is most important to me is to explain to you something. We, in this church, and, and the, the church at large, the true church, we do not hate the LGBT community. That is a lie that a lot of you in the LGBT community have told, and others who call themselves inclusionists and people who are pushing your, your agenda are telling you. It is a lie from the pit of hell and Satan. We do not hate you. If we hate you, we're going to hell. No person whose heart is filled with hate will enter into heaven. Not one. That's why all the lying KKK people, the nationalists who call themselves Christian brothers and, and run around murdering, you're going to hell. Everyone who is filled with hate will be in hell. Whether they sit on a church bench or they sit on a park bench, they're going to hell. So if I call myself a man of God, if I am called by God, I am first called by God to love everyone. And it is this act of love with which I am giving this lesson this evening because I want to help anyone who wants to be helped. You can overcome homosexual, lesbian, LGBT. You can defeat it with the help of God. But just like me, you must have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. I would never have defeated any of it without the Holy Spirit dwelling in me, ever. I have no illusions. I was a gangbanger of sorts. Um, I, I tried to kill a couple people, literally tried to kill them. One guy, he ran. So, I was a fat, I had speed when I was young. One guy ran so fast, boy, it was nothing but the Lord that kept me from killing him. Because God knows if, if, if I had killed him and I didn't get away with it, I was going to, I'd be in jail. So I'm saying all that to say these demonic influences are not going to readily let anyone go. So it is not an indicator that you were born this way because you have a hard time dealing with this spirit. It is a spirit. It is a demonic spirit a fallen angel that has gone against the word of God who is driving you and they want you to believe 
They want you to justify in your mind and your heart. Oh, this is just who I am. I was, I was born like this. You made a decision. All right. You made a decision. Remember that scripture I read, and I'm going to read it again because it's imperative that I talk about this scripture. So first off, we talked about Galatians. We talked about lust, right? We gave all, not just lust, but we gave all of the inclinations of sin, a, a vast list anyway. Everything is pretty much considered um, a portion to this, if not mentioned. Lasciviousness and uncleanness are the ones that tie into sexual immorality, okay? So that part just describes what all the sins are, all things that will keep you out of the kingdom of heaven. But in James, the first chapter, it talks about the lie, that, that lie, I was born like this, and it is a lie from the pit of hell. What does the word say? Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. I don't care how many lies you've been told that they are lying to you. They, they are flat out lying. They want you to believe that because they don't love you. They don't care about you. They just want what they can get from you. All right? This issue is the... Is one of the main reasons that we must take care in the commentaries we expose ourselves to. Because people who do not know the word of God, people who have no relationship with God, are expounding or calling themselves expounding, exegeting on the word of God and know nothing about it, have no relationship with God, and therefore cannot determine what God means by the word. In Gen Genesis, Matthew, Mark, and Ephesians, the word of God points out in scripture that marriage in the eyes of God is signified by the coupling of a male and a female and nothing else. God gave the edict to be fruitful and multiply to man and woman, and you cannot do it otherwise. No one of the LGBTQ, etc. community can fulfill that command by way of their natural relationship with another LGBTQ person, except through medical assistance. This is not the same as any male female couple with medical issues. If you have a woman who cannot get pregnant or has a hard time holding a child in her womb, no, she can get help. But in natural circumstances, if she were healthy, she would be able to have a child with a man. She would be able to be fruitful and multiply in their natural state. I'm sorry, where am I? Uh, da, 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 da. Yep. In their natural state, without medical issues being a factor, they could produce offspring, whereas no one in the LGBTQ community can in perfectly healthy, in a perfectly healthy state, do the same thing. Now, if one is simply marrying outside of that of God's provided perspective, um, whatever you do, what you will say, what you will do, we will do what you like. However, you must recognize that no truly godly person will recognize your marriage as legal in the eyes of God. As for the LGBTQ inclusive community, shame on you for leading people down a path which damns them. Shame on you. Clearly, you have no love for anything except their money, their influence, or their presence and how it benefits you. The true church does not reject anyone. We reject lifestyles that are not reflective of God nor wish to be. I, for one, am tired 
of the fat cat lawyers, politicians, and others in the mainstream telling me how I feel about people. Oddly enough, you continue to force LGBTQ lifestyle upon heterosexuals. You proselytize your narratives in commercials, television, to shows, movies, cartoons. Nothing is safe. There's no place that is left without it. Even the children are being influenced by your narrative. Yet, you think you're going to direct whether or not I mention the name of God. Nope, you're not. You're as wrong as two left shoes. I will say whatever I like. You preach a hate message when you preach against those in the true Christian community. So why should we be any different? Why do we not have the opportunity to speak, to speak against sin? And if I have to preach against men who lie and cheat on wives, if I have to preach against people who lie in general, against people who bat by talk about other people, against people who murder, who steal, who kill. If I've got to preach against them, i got to preach against every other sin, including yours. You lie in front of the nation claiming we send hate messages and force us to see your lifestyle in everything that we see. It's time for this to stop. Real men and women of God will always be against your lifestyle. Not you, your lifestyle, always. But that does not make us hate mongers. It makes us children of God. We hate sin. We don't hate people. So please stop lying. Stop telling people how we feel. As for the lesson, you're not qualified to discuss the meaning behind the word of God until God's spirit dwells within you. If God's spirit dwelled within you, there would be no need for this message. As such, all of you who are unsanctified, leave the word of God to those who are qualified to speak on it. Men and women regenerated by God's spirit who walk according to to that spirit and not according to their flesh as you do. Satan can't interpret the word of God and provide any benefit, only lies and misdirection. And as a result, that's what he's been doing. So I pray that you hear me this evening, that you understand if you're making a decision to be LGBTQ, F, Z, and whatever else, then be a man, be a woman, and say that's what you're making the decision to do. But don't use excuses. Don't claim that there's nothing wrong with it. Don't claim that you've been this way all your life and there's nothing you can do about it because everything is about a choice. You choose to lay down with another man. You choose to lay down with another woman. You choose to have some operation and get male parts put on you or female parts. You're choosing to do that. Sit down. You're choosing and you must Hold yourself accountable for what you choose. I'm praying that this message met someone where they are. This is not a message of hate. This is a message of love. And in truth, you can't trust anyone who is not a man or woman truly sold out to God to tell you anything about what homosexuality means in the Bible. Because if they're not a man or woman of God, if they're not sold out to Christ Jesus, they're, then they're not hearing from Christ. We hear from God. We hear from God's Holy Spirit. And we receive our direction directly from him, not from Satan. And as a result, we're compelled to share the truth. We love gay and lesbian people. We love transgender, bisexual. We love all of you. We don't love the sin you live in, in your lifestyle. I love the gangbangers and, and the alcoholics and the drug addicts too, but I don't love their lifestyle. I'm not a part of it. I will never be a part of it. I would never join it and I won't hang around it. It isn't about you. It's about the lifestyle you've chosen. God is against it and therefore we must be also. I pray that you hear me. I pray that this message wasn't too harsh and that someone's ears eyes and mind and heart were opened. Now let's go before the Lord.
Most gracious and eternal lovely Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you for your word, for this lesson. We thank you for the reassurance of true love. And love, dear God, without assimilation, helps. It seeks to heal and to deliver, not to further cast down. So, Father, we pray that someone's heart was touched by this message, that they heard that they are actually loved rather than what they've been told or taught to believe. They are loved by the true people and women and men, men and women of God. We just don't love anyone's sin, any sin that tries to live within us and any sin that tries to live within anyone else. So God, we pray that you touch our hearts, help us, keep us, forgive us for anything that we've said, done, thought, or felt that was not like you and continue to work in us. Help us to be the loving people you design and desire for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. All right, saints, again, we hope and pray that somebody was able to receive this message tonight. God bless you. May God keep you and heaven shine upon you is our prayer. Say good night. Good night. Good night.